Thank you. I'm sorry. Hi, David. Well, uh, you've had a few days now in Rome. Match day is uh, approaching. Uh, what's the feeling inside the camp now? Yeah, obviously it was uh, not not the result we wanted um, whilst we were in Rome, but um, the the main objective was obviously to get out of the group, and and the boys have done that. So obviously looking forward to to Denmark. It's going to be a, a tough game, but yeah, I think uh, we're all looking in the in the right direction, and, and hopefully we can uh, do the business there. Yeah. And in the long way, David, the competition starts again now with with knockout football. Yeah. Um, if you don't turn up on the day, you're most likely going to go home now. So I think uh, all the boys know that, and and they're going to be trying to obviously play the best. Um, yeah, we we go into the game not not really fearing them. We know they're a good team and, and they've got qualities, but so do we. So uh, I think we'll just be going into the game obviously to to try and get a performance, and and hopefully the result will take care of itself. And your manager said this morning that uh, Wales have got the best counter attacking team. In Europe, that's a, that's quite a compliment. Yeah, um, we've got uh, obviously a lot of, a lot of qualities at, at the top end of the pitch and, and quite a lot of speed. So um, yeah, I think whoever plays can can cause some some damage. Uh, if obviously if, if the counter is needed, then I think we've got the players to do so. And obviously Denmark, a lot now of other of other teams are supporting Denmark with what happened. And then obviously in the first game with uh, Christian Eriksen, from, from your point of view, have you just got to put that to the side? Yeah, I think that near enough the the whole world that was watching. Obviously, it's it's a uh, it's obviously not nice to to see that happen to a player who's who's obviously got a wife and and kids and things like that. I think anyone watching the game is is that's not nice to see, and and obviously everyone surely will be wishing him a, a speedy recovery as am I. So. Um, yeah, like I say, you, you just got to kind of put it to the side. It's a game of football at the end of the day. Thankfully, he's he's kind of back home now and, and well, so we just got to get on with the game of football at hand. I know Welsh fans will be there in Amsterdam on Saturday as players. Is, is that disappointing? Yeah, um, obviously, seeing that the, the Denmark fans are going to be able to, to travel and, and the Wales ones aren't is, is, is not very uh, nice for us. Obviously, we, we'd like to see as many participants in the red wall as possible really they've they made the travel seven hours to, to Baku so um yeah it was great to see them out there obviously cheering us on and obviously we, we'd like them there but we're just going to try and have to do them proud through the TV. I'm sorry for me David, players like Gareth Bale, Aaron Ramsey, Joe Allen, Ben Davis, they've got minutes in the bodies now from that first game and that should help you and stand you in good stead. Yeah, like the the players obviously you've just mentioned are, are top quality players and and they they're playing they pl they played well all throughout the group now so um, hopefully they can uh, continue the form into the knockout stages. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Yeah, well, um, Steve Crossman. Hi, David. You're right. Hey, you're right. Yeah, hey, good. Thank you. Um, I always think this is a question worth asking the the younger lads. So I think you would have been 18 during. Euro 2016. So where did you take it in? I think I've said this in a few interviews. To be fair, I think I was. Uh, I think for the start of the tournament, I was in somewhere like Magaluf or somewhere like that, watching it. Um, just obviously as a fan and, and obviously enjoying my summer off, um, not really knowing that obviously I'd get the chance to play in, in the next one. So yeah, it's a, it's a massive, massive privilege. I've, I've done it as a fan and, and now as a player. So if, if I'd said to you, I mean, I, I wouldn't have been able to say it to you because I wouldn't have been anywhere near my glove, but if I'd said to you that come the next few rows, you'll be involved, what do you think you would have said? How far away at, at that time in your young career did you feel from something like this? Uh, a long way, really. I think, obviously, watching how, how, how well the boys did in the last tournament, it was, it was obviously a little bit unexpected. They, had, they obviously had the talent, but they'd never done that in a tournament before, so it was uh, obviously great to see. Um, watching it from a, a fan's perspective, but I think roughly about that time I was not even in the the first team at Sheffield United properly. So yeah, I'd have probably uh, probably said you were a bit far fetched in, in thinking that. So um, yeah, obviously it's a, it's a ma massive privilege to be here and, and somewhere that uh, I'm very proud to be. It's obviously a really young squad, but but youth doesn't always mean an experience. And I was just looking this morning at the number of you guys 
who've been together even since you know when you made your under 21s debut in 2017 so because the younger lads do know each other quite well do you think you've been able to kind of almost have like a club mentality within the national team environment i think not necessarily a, a club's mentality but i think um it is it is like a family mentality i think everyone kind of gets along and, and i doubt other national teams would probably do what other boys do if you know what i mean i think um obviously we get down to business when it's it's needed but um in our off times and things like that the, the way we chill together and stuff like that i don't see many other teams probably bonding the way we do so um i think that obviously helps us on the pitch as well when you're, you're grinding for your mates i think it obviously gives you that extra boost Yeah, I think that's obviously <laughs> for in-house, but um, yeah, I think uh, there's there's a lot of things that we do as a team, and obviously you have your little groups as well that you, you kind of have fun with. So obviously pass, it is a long time when you're away. I think I've been away now for, for five weeks. Um, obviously in the bubble, you can't you can't go out, you can't literally do anything, so you're kind of with this lot um, for five weeks because you usually get a bit boring, but um, yeah, I think all the lads are in the same boat and, and somehow we're, we're still enjoying it. Thanks, David. Thanks, Steve. Go in, Stevens. Those questions have me very nicely onto what I want to ask you about, David, which I think Rob Page might have stitched a lot of you, uh, you up. Can I ask what you sing if you're late for a meeting? <laughs> um, well, I haven't been late to any of this, uh, this trip, so I, I haven't really had to sing this one, but I think the last camp... Me and Locks were, were late for a meeting and we did a duet on uh, American Boy by Estelle. So we did a, a bit of a rap and um, yeah, I, I don't really like singing so uh, I tried to avoid being late. Um, Rob said quite a few players are literally coming in with seconds to go. Um, can, you, can you give us some, an insight into who is a regular latecomer who, who may be singing the most in, on this camp? Because the whole point being is it, it seems to show that you're having a laugh when you can switch on, off. You're, you're smiling, you're laughing, and you're being silly, which is which is what fosters good, uh, you know, a good morale throughout the camp. Yeah, I think there's there's a few players that are, I'd say I'd probably put myself in that bracket who, who like to leave things uh, last minute and and try and roll the dice on how, how close you can uh, leave it to get to a meeting and, and things like that. Sometimes the the time just kind of gets away from you. So um, yeah, I think there's there's a few of us that. Uh, are not best at timekeeping, especially when you sat in your room for hours on end. You kind of just forget where you need to be sometimes. Uh, listen, last one on this. Who was the worst singer? I'd say Mep probably. I think um, he, he likes he likes to have a go sometimes, but um, he's a bit shy until he's uh, he's into it. But even then, he's he's not got a great voice. I'll uh, I'll have to say. Um, listen, one quick serious question on, on, on the game, if I may. Um, just about what you have to do. Um, you know, you could come on, you could be on the pitch within five minutes. You may start. How do you sort of juggle being potentially a non-starter whose job is to help prepare the starting eleven to being fighting to maybe try and be in the starting eleven? How do you how do you do that, David? Yeah, it's it's not exactly where I want to be. Obviously, sat on the bench for the the first three games. Um, I, don't, I don't think that's any secret, really. I think. It's just unfortunate that the guy in my position is uh, playing for Real Madrid at the time and probably one of the best players in the world. So you, you just have kind of have to be ready for any opportunity that, that kind of comes your way. And um, obviously, I, I'm, I'm trying to stay ready. I'm trying to train well and, and obviously uh, just be ready if, if called upon. It's the best of luck for Saturday, Debbie. Thanks ever so much. Yeah, thank you. Nigel Adderley. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, David, um, when you're playing um, in a squad format as you are at the moment, you, you've talked about the, uh, the inclusivity of the, of the whole squad. How much do you think that's a part of the, the, the coach's role on, on a day by day to make you feel involved and to not have the starting eleven and, and the rest because you could all have a role, as you say. Yeah, I, th I think it. Obviously, if you if you are if you are a manager, it is it's kind of difficult to to keep everyone motivated because you've got a 26 man squad, but only 11 will will take the pitch. Really, I think. I think 
with even the squad, I think obviously three miss out from the actual overall squad, which obviously isn't nice uh, to start with. But majority of the the bench players obviously aren't getting on either. So I think it is obviously quite hard for team morale, but we all kind of know why we're here and, and what we want to achieve. So you just kind of got to get on with it and, and just try and be ready if, if the manager comes calling. And you mentioned the calibre of the, the player ahead of you in the team at the moment, um, uh, play, playing for Real Madrid. But, but he seems to be a, a real influence on and off the field for you. Yeah, I think, obviously I made a comment there, but he's... He is actually like a really nice guy. I, I kind of get on with him, and he obviously talks to us on and off the pitch. Um, yeah, he's, he's obviously a fantastic footballer, and he's he's a real good uh, character to, to have around, kind of the hotel and, and the change room. So he, he's obviously playing well and, and scoring goals, and he is the caliber of player that you kind of want in your team, and, and obviously a really good leader as well. So, like I say, I've just kind of got to be ready for if an opportunity comes my way. And just finally. Um this game was one of the biggest in most football history. There haven't been too many games at this stage of major tournaments. How do you sort of try and keep the right temperature of, of, around the camp and in the hotel and the build-up to it? Well, I, I can't really talk for everyone, but it's, it's the kind of games that I assume near enough everyone will want to play in. I think um, to, to kind of write our own history, obviously the lads that were there last time have, have cemented their place in history by doing what they doing what they did. Sorry and. I, th I don't really think any we're any different. Obviously, there's a few lads that were there then and now, um, but for the new lads, we all kind of want to help reenact or, or recreate something like that and, and kind of go in, in the history books ourselves. Good man. Good luck at the weekend. Thanks very much. Dear Heidel um, Van Fischer. Hi, David. Can I just take you back sort of a few years in terms of your relationship with the, uh, with the manager, Rob Page, and, and how he kind of, I think I'm right in saying, kind of got you on board with, with Wales, as it were? Well, it, the, the whole start of it was kind of a, a big misunderstanding. I'd, I'd kind of arranged to go away with, with England, and, and everything was, was already planned, and, and literally on the day of the announcement of the, the tournament, about an hour before I was getting announced for England, obviously Wales announced theirs and I, I hadn't been contacted. I had never been called up before, so I, I didn't know anything about it. And I was just kind of in the squad. And obviously, I, then I spoke to, to Paige on the phone and said I, I'd already made commitments and, and promises that I, I'd go away with, with England. And he wasn't really phased by that. So I had to obviously thank him for kind of not turning his back on us then. I, I kind of always wanted to play for Wales, but the opportunity never came up. Um, and then obviously after that tournament, um, the opportunity came up to, to go away and, and try and experience obviously what the Wales camps were like and, and literally from the moment I stepped foot in a Wales camp I didn't really want to go back and and thank like I say thankfully he didn't really turn his back and, and there wasn't a problem and yeah I, I've never looked back since. Yeah I suppose you sort of had a good chat about it basically and just him obviously I suppose a bit of persuasion or just sort of reassurance maybe. Yeah, when I spoke to him on the phone after the the squad got announced, he said it was it was obviously completely their fault that no one had contacted me saying I'd been called up prior to the the squad announcement. So I was I was none the wiser that Wales were even looking at me as a, a potential player, really. So I'd I'd obviously made commitments. He, he knew I'd made commitments, and he, like I say, he didn't have a, a single problem with it. And and after that, uh, like I say, as soon as I came down to Wales, there was there was no doubt in my mind that I wanted to take that path and and try and get. Down, down the journey into into the first team. Yeah, and just lastly, how, how does it work, David, in terms of how you guys, obviously yourself, Nick Pauling Warrens, and, and some of the others like Chris Meckham and that, who aren't Pauling Wales, how, how does Rob and the team get everybody on board as well, so that you all come together as one? Well, like I say, I can't, I can't talk for everyone, but I think there's only in in my living family at the moment. I think there's only my dad that is English. Like I've spent quite a lot of time um, in the North Wales and in Tlangothlan and around Trevor and things like that with uh, my nana, granddad, all my uncles and aunties and, and things like that. My whole family, apart from my dad and obviously my brother, uh, are obviously Welsh, so it was, a, it was a big part of my life. And like I say, like I really enjoyed growing up with the, the Welsh heritage and, and the kind of experiences that I had in North Wales. So. It was a it was a no brainer when when obviously I wanted to play for Wales when when they came calling that obviously I did end up choosing Wales. Thanks, David. Thanks, Ben. Thomas Esther. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I'm from German Press Agency. Um, thanks. Just one question. Can you um, say some words more about the manager, Robert Page? Can you describe him a little bit? Um, what kind of manager he is and what are the most or the, the differences between him and Brian Giggs? Yeah, I d to be fair, I don't, I don't think um, a lot has changed. Obviously, it's, it's been a, a very short period since obviously Pagey took over and obviously we'd already kind of qualified for the tournament um, so it was a uh, I don't really think Pagey needed to come in and, and, and try changing things which I don't think he really did much in terms of drastic changes but obviously um, he's obviously in charge and doing a, a good job and, and we're kind of playing well so yeah obviously he's doing a good job at the minute so I haven't really got anything to say. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Hi, Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Can you hear me? Thanks. Um, I, I, David, you, you've just come off a, a really competitive um, and ultimately slightly heartbreaking uh, championship season. Um, and just looking at the, the Wales team, and in fact some of the, some of the Danish team, um, the championship is, has been a really important part of, 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 of both sides. Do, do, do you think in this tournament its, it's value has been advertised a bit? Yeah, I think the the standard, obviously, in English football, I think throughout the, the four divisions is probably, if you look anywhere in the world and drop down to the second, third or fourth division, I think it's probably the best in its, its, its obviously area. I think dropping down from the Premier League was obviously a not a nice feeling and we wanted to try and kind of bounce back, but obviously the Championship shows you that you've got to be consistent over 40-odd games. So, um, yeah, I think... Obviously, we just fell short of the, of the final hurdle, but I think um, we we put uh, well, we put in some good performances and we probably should have done a little better, but it, it just wasn't meant to be on the last day. Uh, and, 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 uh, there's a couple of Brentford players in the Danish side. Was that uh, any bearing on your attitude to the game? <laughs> no, not really, I think. Uh, it w I don't really think it was down to anything the Brentford players did. I think obviously we were just a bit unfortunate. I think the the position we were in, we sh we should have we should have held on and and probably gone through. I think it was uh, our own downfalls that that caused um, that. I think there's no no real hostility towards any of the the Brentford players, for, especially from my end. So it's it's just a normal game that we need to get on with and obviously try and get the win. Thanks. Hi David, it's Max from the South London Press here. Um, you mentioned yourself, this game coming up on Saturday is the sort of match that every member of the squad wants to be playing in. Um, I'm wondering how Ethan Ampadu is dealing, how his spirits are, given that he's going to be suspended for the most important game of his Wales career to date. Is it something, you know, the other players have had to rally around a bit to keep his spirits up? I think obviously everyone put their arm around him. Uh, obviously, the the day of the Italy game, it was. I think it was uh, probably a little bit harsh. Obviously, the red, um, in in my opinion, um, but it's it's one of them things in tournament football that can happen, and and hopefully we can get through so we can uh, obviously play a part in the next game. Yeah, I think uh, at the start we we had a meeting with um, a referee and and they kind of go over the the slight changes or or whatever they they kind of want to put across to us players in terms of going into the tournament. Um, and obviously, if by the letter of the law it is sending off, obviously he sent him off for the right reasons and, and stuff like that. But like I say, I personally thought it was a little bit harsh. But you kind of just got to get on with it and and try and move on and try not to argue. Cheers. Thanks, Max. And finally, James Mercy. Hey, David. Thanks for your time. Um, you touched earlier on, obviously, about 2016. It, 
Wales played England, didn't they, uh, at that tournament? Um, I know Denmark are the team in front of you, but if you or any of the lads uh, dared to dream at all about the possibility of t- taking on England later in the tournament, would that be uh, a bit of a carrot, do you think? Yeah, like I say, I think everyone wants to kind of be involved in, in the biggest games possible. I think if you get say if we get through to the quarters or the semis or, or whatever really like even the round of 16 it's, it's a massive game for for us as a, a team and a country so I think everyone wants to play this one and if we get through then obviously we want to play near enough anyone I think if you're going to go far in tournaments you need to beat the best teams anyway you just have to take the 2016 obviously when they beat Belgium like you're going to have to beat big teams to, to kind of get where you want to go anyway so um like I say, you just want to kind of play in the big, the big games and, and hopefully you can come out on top.